Well, this is Jared with Stampede Blue, and this is your Indianapolis Colts post-game wrap. The Colts won at home today on Thursday Night Football, beat the New York Jets 45-30. to um, Colts are now 4-5, and 2-3 and three at home. Carson Wentz was 22-30, 272 yards, three touchdowns, had with it, sacked once, hit late a little bit. Um, wasn't really happy with the way the Colts finished that game. Uh, on both offense and defense, I felt like pass rush still didn't seem to get enough pressure, which is kind of crazy because they did have two sacks. They they forced fumble, an interception. Felt like they had like three turnovers on that last drive. Um, now, coming into the game, New York Jets upstart quarterback Mike White, uh, former fifth-round pick of the Dallas Cowboys, supposed to be the starter here, supposed to give the Colts some hell. 7 for 11 for 95 yards and a touchdown and left the game with an injury. So Josh Johnson came in, 27 for 41, 317 yards, three touchdowns, and an interception. Uh, that, did, that did end the game. Um, so, yeah, Colts get a big, much-needed win against a bad football team. Uh, and then the problem, again, is while the Colts did much of what they wanted to do, they played three quarters, right? They controlled the game for three quarters. In the fourth quarter, they they let the Jets back into that football game. And on that last drive, with about a minute left, the Jets did still have a chance to actually win that game, right? It's a touchdown, two-point conversion, touchdown, two-point conversion, right? After you get the onside kick, right? So anytime you, I mean, obviously a 10.5-point spread, one by 15, kind of one going away, uh, kind of doing whatever you wanted, right? Uh Jonathan Taylor, 19 for 172 with two touchdowns, uh, carries that is, uh, finally getting, you know, sort of the sort of workload you wanted him to do, you know, we averaged almost nine yards a carry today, running the ball, so I know a lot of people were, um, you want to see the Colts pass a ton, but the Colts have really good running backs, and, uh, when you're able to carry the Rock 30 carries for 260 yards and 8.7 yards a carry, you're going to run the football, um, Naheem Hines, six uh, carries for 74 yards and touchdown. He also had four catches for 34 yards. Michael Pittman uh, Jr. had five catches for 64 yards and a touchdown. And, and really, uh, everybody contributed today. I mean, Denny Pinter caught a touchdown, uh, a Ball State kid. Um, so Colts got everybody involved today in a big one, especially on offense. I mean, Sam Ellinger came in and, and ran the option. Um, so the Colts uh, did... Uh, pretty much whatever they wanted to do on offense today. Uh, I'm still leery about this defense, particularly at safety and, and, and cornerback and, and its scheme and its Eberflus and its, I'm just not, I don't know, is it, is it, make, make it in, try to make it interesting football? Because if that's, if that's what it is, I'm not about that. Um, but I don't like, the, I, I just feel like I'm not in love with the Colts defensive scheme. Uh, obviously, uh, a lot of people are going to say, you know, I really wish the Colts would have done a little more in safety. Um, but again, I think I think anytime you get a win in this league, um, you just got to be happy with that. Uh, I think. And the Colts got the Colts got some some contests coming up. You know, it's not all roses. Um, you're staring staring at about uh, down the barrel of, of getting uh, getting another sort of warm up game in the Jags. A very winnable game could put the Colts at 500, right? With eight games, with seven games left, um, going into um, a two week stretch, I wouldn't wish on anyone, right? So they got to you got to go play in Buffalo with the Bills, and then you got to host the Bucks back to back weeks. But then you get the Texans, right? So so it's a shit sandwich, and in that. You know, you got kind of bad teams um, on the bookend of a couple good teams there in the middle. Um, uh, didn't appear to have anyone be injured. Did see Chris Reed's taking over the right guard spot, right? And we kind of talked about how uh, Glowinski was the replaceable offensive lineman. And now with a clear upgrade available in Chris Reed, um, heard Braden Smith uh, hurt himself. So, again, the Colts offensive line not 100%. Um, it goes to show you how important it, uh, the trenches are. Um, again, always happy with a win. Uh, Darius Leonard's still amazing. The, like I said, the, the Colts on offense pretty much do whatever they want. The Jets are a bad football team. It's really hard to come away from this game. Um, anytime you have over 500 yards of offense, you you were cooking. And um, anytime you put 45 points on the board, uh, you did real well. But I just don't like the let.
I don't like to let my opponent score. I don't want to give them any film. I don't want to give my opponent any film. I don't want to give my opponent any ideas, um, any future ideas. And I think that's the sort of danger uh, in in being bad on defense. Uh, it lets teams game plan to beat uh, your piss poor coverage. Um, and that, and that's, I think, going to be the downfall of the Colts this season. Uh, that and the 0-3 start, you know, I think it, I think ultimately you might have you're gonna, might have needed to win one of those games, uh, just like either one of the games against the Titans, right? Um, so even even with Derrick Henry down and, and a lot of people saying, you know, the Titans become a lot more beatable without without Derrick Henry, uh, I still think Tennessee wins some football games. They're still well coached. They've still got good personnel. So I would be, of course, concerned about counting out the Titans. Uh, and then realize that much like today, the Colts have to continue to play basically f- perfect football. Um, you can f- afford n- not but maybe one loss the rest of the way. I th- I think, um, you know, if you look t- at recent years, 10, 10, 11 wins, and then you add a game. Um, so... You know, uh, we want to say, you know, the Colts are still playing for a wild card. Uh, there, there's people going to say, you know, the Colts would sneak in and win a division if the Titans fall flat on their face, right? Um, I don't know about that. Um, I don't know how much I try, would try to put weight I'd try to put behind that. Um, but the reality is, like I said, the Colts are four and five. Um, I think four and two in their in their last six with two overtime losses. So uh, certainly, I think a lot of people are gonna are gonna be talking about the Colts being on the cusp of uh of being a good football team uh and i and i hope that 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 there's carryover in the next year and there isn't a lot of attrition again because i think that a lot of this could be for not um you could you could be um carson Wentz could be taking unnecessary hits and shortening his career uh in games he shouldn't be playing and I think that's the sort of concern that I have. And again, I keep pointing to like mismanagement of personnel, right? Uh, where I get that um, you want to win football games. Uh, but I feel like when you're up big and uh, your offense is sort of stalled, it's a good time to get your backup reps. Um, especially in a situation where you need, uh, for example, Carson Wentz to sit some. Um, a lot of his remaining, uh, you know, I think after last week's game, I think he had already used 60 something percent of the usable snaps for the season before hit that, that pick becomes a first round pick that he was traded for. Right. And, uh, obviously you don't want to give away a first round pick if you don't have to. I, I, I guess I didn't know I had to f- feel like I had to say that because there's still people out there like, you know, um, you're going to play that quarterback, whether he's healthy or not, uh, to a degree. Um, I, I think, I still think he, he could have used a little IR time earlier in the season. Uh, if you're going to lose those games and not be competitive in them, like Colts weren't, um, you might as well let him sit and get healthy. Uh, but now he's rolling and now he's going to end up looking like a top 10 quarterback in the NFL and people are going to, you know, throw flowers at the guy's feet. Um, and I, and I'm not ready to quite, uh, crown wins the goat um but i am saying you know definitely potentially worth like a second round draft pick and trade if you think uh, about it and and if the colts make the playoffs and are able to beat a team like the bills for example um whether it be in the playoffs or in this one of these upcoming games here beat even the bucks um i think it goes a long way uh to give frank reich a lot of credit so uh, w- one of the narratives is sort of being spun is that frank reich frank reich and in this Colts team don't win uh, big games. And what I'm saying is, is you've got two coming uh, in the Bills and Bucks. And I think um, he could easy, he could he could potentially go. I hate to say two and zero, but like he splits those two games. One of those is a big game um, in terms of like a win, uh, and that could go go away to get get the monkey off Frank Reich's back. And and again, I feel like this the sort of what is going to end up holding the Colts back is, is ultimately the coaching, the play calling, the personnel management, um, all those things. Um, you can never be 100% correct, right? There's so many moving parts and games and so many things that are outside of your control. Um, and, I'm, and I'm hopeful. You know, I want to see the, I want to see the Colts play a full game, uh, both sides of the ball, and not play what I would call like 
really sloppy defense. Uh, and I get it, they're they're injured and they're, and they're down to their, uh, you know, safeties are coming in off the street. Um, and, and I feel like there's always work to be done, right? So, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely uh, glad the Colts won, but I'd kind of warned in the podcast, if you watched it earlier, it's going to be real hard to be happy uh, if I felt like the Colts let the Jets uh, g- gain some ground on them. And, and, and the Colts really, really did kind of let them back into the game, didn't they? Um, so, yeah, got a, a long a long rest going into the Jaguars game. Uh, and then and then the hits keep coming, like we said, b- Bills and Bucks after that. Um, so this has been Jared with Stampede Blue. This has been your Indianapolis Colts post-game wrap. Uh, enjoy the games this weekend, uh, and we'll see you after next week's game.